And now we are in Hazat, which is uh, in the crossroads in this corridor. We call it the middle corridor. Good day and you're watching Trails of Eurasia TV and Zaur is here with you. Today we have a very serious topic dedicated to Baku International Sea Trade Port and show you in fact what is actually built up to date and we're honored to uh, have a chance to meet Chief Operating Officer Mr. Eugen. My name is uh, Eugen, Eugen Sia. I'm the Chief Operations of Port Baku. I've been working here for six years. Actually, I'm from Singapore. And now we are in Azad, which is uh, in the crossroad in this corridor. We call it the middle corridor. And why is it called the middle corridor? Because there are very alternative routes to connect the east and west. And for Azerbaijan, now with growing emphasis on promoting the logistics hub in this region, the government has made it one of the strategies to build a logistics center located in Agat, for which the port of Baku. Currently we are in the general cargo terminal. As you can see in the behind, we have a container yard, which is the storage capacity is 1,000 containers. Uh, we have an, then 56,000 square meters of open storage areas. We have a six, eight cranes here. Uh, on the crane rails in this uh, versus we have three railway lines for pushing wagons and pulling out. This is a big hopper for handling the bulk cargo to the hopper wagons. Also, we can handle the other bulk cargoes to different type of wagons. As you can see, we are just uh, showing you how the cargo ship parked and it came from Kazakhstan. largest port in the Caspian Sea is here in Azerbaijan. Even during the pandemic, where other corridors are closed, Port of Baku still was operating. We established a system because we had enough uh, space here to quarantine the trucks that uh, came here, to screen those drivers that are infected, and to have some sort of system where we can have a green pass to those drivers that are able to go on board the vessels with their trucks to go across the Caspian Sea. And for which this system was actually modeled and uh, also in a way copied to, uh, to the borders between Azerbaijan and Georgia. And so that we had a more effective uh, look ahead system for which we can identify the drivers at the borders before they come here and to know that whether they have a green pass to for passage across across the Caspian to the Mumbashi port and to Akal port. And we survived the pandemic quite well. We established some good growth, double-digit uh, traffic increase, even for the containers, uh, and even for about, about cargo, uh, which we're handling from Tengwimistan, the fertilizers coming to here. And then we go by rail wagons to Georgia and onto the Black Sea and to international markets. And now we are at a stage of looking at creating certain uh, areas, value-added areas inside the port for which we can attract investors to come in to operate. Things like um, looking at creating with certain companies uh, some joint ventures to operate block trains, let's say, between here, Port Baku and to Porti. And why is this important? Because this is one of the last frontiers right, in this region where such initiatives can have explosive growth. When you look at China as a market, right, or as a even as a as a growing middle class there, things are getting more expensive to be produced. And so what's next, people may ask. 
where, where else can we do such manufacturing value-added industries where costs becoming more expensive? So people tend to forget that we have Azerbaijan right in the centre with good stability in the government, with uh, strong foundations in terms of education. People here are quite well educated, right? And a lot of them are actually educated abroad as well, sponsorship by the, by the government. And there are a lot of opportunities for companies to come here to start a business and to be I went while well, back was in China 20, 30 years ago when they started the industrial revolution and they got into the world stage joining the WTO and into the world markets. Here is something that offers opportunity for companies to set up their business for which they can establish uh, let's say a manufacturing center and use the logistics uh, expertise created by the port as well as all the connectivity that we have now uh, implemented. So if people would be having a choice to pick the route to let's say bring their goods which they produce on the east, far east to Europe let's say, what do you think is the main benefit? The main benefit is of course the distance, the time, right? You talk about 10 to 15,000 kilometers coming from the ports eastern seaboard to us to go to Europe. The time is cut more than half. Right now, especially at this point in time where there's, there's a lot of backlog traffic, you take maybe from Asia uh, to come here even to, to Porti, it will take you four to six months, right? But if you take it from, put it on a wagon to go from China, from one of the ports, across to Kogos, Kogos to Aktau, Aktau across the Caspian Sea to us, to Turkey, it will take you maybe eight weeks, I mean two months. Azerbaijan will be going to transform into a logistics hub centre for Baku and surrounding it will be a free trade zone, right? And then there will be also an ecosystem created where we have nearby cities connecting to us because need to work, they need to live, they need to have a life for them to be able to work in a free trade zone and the port, my prediction, will continue to grow to support these initiatives by the government. So the slogan of uh, Port of Baku is your hub in Eurasia and the channel we are in is Trails of Eurasia. Have you heard about Azerbaijan prior to coming over here? No, not exactly to tell you the truth. When they started mentioning Azerbaijan, then I started looking up, where's the sea, you know? They not even got a sea, it was cool sea. <laughs> so I was surprised. So it, when I came here, it was very um, exciting to know that actually, right, there's a lot of things to be done to create this logistics hub, you know, a lot of connections to be made, a lot of mindsets to be changed. And to bring my experience from Singapore working in the port here was was like a, a dream come true for me. Thank you very much for your time and definitely we will be following up on the development of the place and being proud of uh, your involvement and results which are going to be definitely spread more to the globe via the media and uh, our channel is one of the two for that. Thank you very much for Thank your you. time. Hope you enjoyed watching this episode and you got plenty of information what is existing in here and definitely you can look at it also as a potential investor. Come and invest to Azerbaijan and it's going to be a future for not just a country for you but for the entire region. Stay safe and see you soon.